3A will be the Smoke and Joes with Mark Tate in lane one, Miss Casey, Jerry Hop lane two. Wellness plan with Mark Evans in the third slot. On the outside, his brother Mitch Evans in Mill Bay Casino. It looks like it's going to be a good start as they come down. The green flag flies right off the bat. It appears that wellness plan is going to be right up in the middle of that pack. Smoke and Joe's on the inside is going to battle him for the lead. Smoke and Joe's took the lead momentarily. Wellness plan came up and took it just momentarily again. And now it's Smoke and Joe's. But you can see the red cowling through the rooster tail every now and then of the wellness plan. Mark Evans, who drove the Miss Budweiser in Madison two weeks ago, is now feeling his oats in the wellness plan and doing a great job. Here's Jerry Hopp. He is aboard the Miss Casey. And there's the high flying Smoke and Joe's taking off on the course again. Boy, Mark Tate would like nothing better to make it three straight in the win column for Steve Woomer's team, and he's out to do that today as he's showing them the short way around the course right now in the Smoke and Joe. Good race as the wellness plan on the outside maintains a margin of about two boat lengths between himself in second place and the leader, Smoke and Joe's. He just fell back just a little bit more on that turn, and look at Smoke and Joe's powers on. There was a great shot to show you how they literally slide the boat through, aim it down the straightaway, and power on. Miss Casey with Cherry Hop in our picture then, and now Mitch Evans in Mill Bay Casino. That's your third and fourth place boat. As we go back to our second place boat, the wellness plan driven by Mark Evans. As we look at our leader, the Spoken Joes with Mark Tate, he's got one more lap to go. All of the preliminary heats are only three lappers, Dick, as we know, and the finale is five laps. As we look at our second place boat, back to the first place boat, and our Zodiac lap speed is 141 mile an hour. And we remind everybody again that in order to hit that 141 miles per hour, they have got to be going a lot faster than that in the straightaways. The big skid fin that you see kicking in on the Smoking Joes right there, that skid fin actually slows the boat down in the turn. The boat is actually powering against a big amount of resistance, so then they have to pick their speed back up on the straightaway. So that's how they figure the average. It's the average all the way around the course, four corners and two straightaways. Mark Tate doing a great job of powering through the Smoking Joes into another win. I'm telling you, this team is really on a roll. They have won two Two races back to back. There's the checkered flag again, and now they're in great position for the championship heat. They only trail by 86 points going into this heat with a 400 point victory. They now have 344 point lead over the Budweiser, who is yet to compete in the third round. The gauntlet has been thrown. Here's your food little loon standings in points for this heat. Good racing all day long for the Smokin' Joe's team. There goes the Budweiser getting ready to race in our next heat. Let's go down to the winner's dock and Steve Woomer. Steve, we figure that six straight heat victories. Is this getting old? Uh, never gets old. <laughs> it's always exciting, and the water's really rough out there, so, you know, it's anybody's race here in the final. Mark, that'll give you lane choice in the final heat. Do you know where you want to be? That's going to be a tough decision. Uh, I think that's something that the team will decide here in a few minutes. Lane one is rough, though. I think the whole race course is rough at this point, but uh, we'll discuss it and uh, make our decision here shortly. Speaking about the uh, points race, Ed Cooper runs the last of the piston-powered boats. And we're questioning now whether they'll even have enough points for that final heat. They sure do work hard. Steve David, he's all ready to go in the T-plus again. He'd like to have a great day out there on the course and take another checkered flag. He's going to face Bill Walk, Hanauer, and Muscatel coming up next as ESPN Speed World continues. Welcome back to the heart of Texas. Dick Crippen along with Jim Hendrick and Steve Montgomery as Bernie Little talks over a little strategy. Heat 3B already on the water. Let's get the lineup. In lane number one, Miss Budweiser with Chip Hanauer. Steve David takes lane two in the T-plus engine treatment. Pico's America Dream in the third slot with Dave Billwalk on the outside. Ken Muscatel in Miss Louisville. As we look at the start, they are now racing. Already, Miss Budweiser trying to establish the lead. T-plus just off to the right in second place. And in third, the blue and white boat is the Pico American Dream. Chip Hanauer wasting no time at all getting his boat powered to the front. Well, there's a reason for that, Dick. 
He's 344 points down in the Eagles next to Duels high point chase by virtue of the Smoke and Joe win in 3A. He has to pick up 400 points to regain a slim 86-point lead. Jim, as we look at our lead boat, the Miss Budweiser, I'm going to watch very closely back of him because the battle for second place is going to be where the action is. The T-plus and Picos. Picos is trying to close in on the T-plus. There you see Picos to the left of your screen. The lead boat is in front, and there is the T-plus. D-plus right now holding on to second place. Steve David, Picos is trying to close him on the outside. So that's a battle we'll have to keep an eye on. As they go through, Steve David flies just a little bit. You can see that break in the rooster tail. Whenever the rooster tail falls down sharply, the boat usually has been airborne. That battle for second place led by this boat, the T-plus with Steve David and the third place boat, Picos American Dream with Dave Philbuck. A little competition earlier here today. They almost traded paint, and we had an unhappy driver in Picos American Dream. Maybe he's looking for a little satisfaction here. Well, we'll see. He sure has an opportunity to prove it with speed if he's got it in the Pico American Dream. Meanwhile, out in front, you know, you look at that boat bouncing around, the Miss Budweiser. I have to remind everybody that Chip Hanauer missed two races because of a rib injury. Boy, that has got the smart. I don't care what he says, but he says he's doing okay, and apparently he is because he's certainly out in front. Talking about second and third place running, the T-plus Zodiac lap speed is 135 mile an hour. And the Picos, 137 miles an hour in the same lap as he's trying to catch him. Well, again, we look at that difference between the inside boat that has a lesser amount of ground to travel as compared to the outside boat. And there you see the difference in those two boats. The T-plus holding on to second place right now. Stephen David, he's going to settle for second, I think, this time around. Miss Budweiser now looking for the checkered flag. Chip Hanauer wanting to get those points to take the lead once again in the point standings. He is coming around the final turns, looking up to the starter's tower. The checkered flag is flying. Chip Hanauer will take a win again in the Miss Budweiser. A good day for them. Second place to the T-plus. Third place will go to Pico American Dream, who was trying to catch him. You can see, even as they came down to the finish line, it was close. And 400 points for Miss Budweiser now puts him back out in front. 86 points, and the Eagle Snacks will do his high point chase, and there's the rest of the finish. Your winner was Chip Hanauer once again today in the Miss Budweiser. And this gentleman, again, as we told you, returning to the seat after missing two races. Mark Evans replaced him for those two. Let's go down to the docks and see how he's feeling now. Chip, you needed those points and you got 400. That's just what you needed to do. Yeah, we're behind points, but, uh, you know, we'll take what we can get and raise him in the final. It looked raceable. Is it okay, Al? It's raceable. It's really rough, but raceable. Well, it isn't going to get any smoother, that's for sure. The water continues to roughen up as we continue to aim at the championship heat. We'll be back with more racing in just an old race that was just run. This one between two brothers, Mitch Evans, who you see right there. He is in the Mill Bay Casino boat, and his brother, Mark Evans, in the wellness plan. And they put on quite a battle for the fans. And a couple of boys from Lake Chelan as they compete for the trailer spot in the final race. This was the last lap of that race, and the winner of the race goes on to the trailer position in the final, the championship final. The other one will watch from shore as they come down for the checkered. It looks like Wellness Plan had a little bit of an advantage coming into the turn, but Mitch Evans in the Mill Bay Casino evens things up on the inside. Now it's Wellness Plan holding in there with them, deck to deck down to the finish line. Look at these guys go out of two brothers, and it looks Looks like Wellness Plan with a very slight advantage. He is going to try to hold it in there for the rest of the lap. Mark Evans doing a good job at driving. He's really done an awful lot with that boat. You got to give him a lot of credit. As he comes out, though, looks what happens. His brother evens it up on the inside. Mitch trying to get all those pistons pushing all the power they can possibly muster. There's your winner coming across the line. Wellness plan. Mark Evans, a good race for the fans. They enjoyed a little deck-to-deck -deck racing. And, of course, he'll be the trailer now in the winner-take-all final here at Lake Louisville, just outside of Dallas, Texas. Now, back in the pits, the rest of the fleet is prepping for the finale. And you know, Dick, even if you cross the finish line first, it doesn't guarantee a victory, as Steve Montgomery inquired about the last race. Guys, you recall that recently Al Unser Jr. had an apparent victory taken away from him in the IndyCar race in Portland by the technical inspector. Same thing could happen here. You don't get the trophy unless Pete Thompson says you're legal.
Pete, tell us what you check on the boats. One of the first things we do is to take this ring and insert it over the prop to make sure that it uh, fits the 16-inch parameters that are outlined. The next thing we do is scale the boat uh, and make sure that it's a minimum of 6,000 pounds that's required. After that, we check the fuel system to make sure that all the plumbing's correct. We pull the uh, fuel restrictor and take it to the trailer, and we flow that and make sure that it's 4.7 or more. Upon that, then uh, basically we're complete except for a fuel sample, and then we can announce a winner. Well, we have talked a lot about different racing, and you know we have the unlimited lights that travel with us to all the starts. And I have to tell you, this has been one of the strangest set of circumstances we've seen in the competition camps, unlimited light finals. Keep your eye on the pace boat. Look at what happens. He cuts right across the entire field. We had a couple of boats. It looked like they bumped, and another boat was cut off. Everybody is okay and running, but now the officials have to try to sort things out. Dick, it looks like bumper cars. Watch the boat on your left. He's supposed to be the pace boat. He cuts in diagonally and cuts off the, the boat in the fifth lane, goes across to lane three, bumps into the boat in lane two, and it's dog eat dog out there. It looked like one of the boats didn't turn on the inside, and that was the problem that was happening there. We go up to the air to take a look at what the helicopter saw. There you can see it right there. They came together on the courses. The one boat cut in from the side. The other boat didn't make the turn. Boy, they are going to really have something to sort out. But while they do, they ran the race, and here's the way it looked on the very last lap. Boats all over the place, flying high. Nobody really sure whether they're in contention or not. The yellow boat coming up on the inside is the Pegasus Pontiac, Mark Weber. He's doing a good job at driving. There's the man that we think is the leader at this point. We'll get the official results momentarily. But that is Charlie Wiggins out of Gadsden, Alabama, who had a good run in Madison, Indiana. Got something loose on his boat there, flying around, but apparently not affecting the speed of the boat. He gets a little bit light. But Charlie Wiggins of Gadsden, Alabama, goes on to take the win in the competition cams. Unlimited light championship today. Congratulations. But I'll tell you what, they've got a lot of explaining to do down in the pit area as to who did what. Well, a couple of the unlimited drivers wishing each other luck as we get ready for the championship. We'll be back in a moment.